Thanks for joining me today as we create these gorgeous cards in a pattern paper technique part two. So some of these we created in part one and we're going to make these beautiful cards today. This is Jen Lee with Gentastic Journey, including card crafting. I am going to ask for your help later. I have some dies that I don't know what they're for, so stay till the end and I'm going to ask your help on those. Thanks. Okay, I wanted to show you what some of this pattern paper looked like up close because it's really hard to see against the black background. So I did some pinks and then I did some autumn colors. Today we're going to play with the pinks, which was the first set I showed you, but I just wanted to show you what some of these look like. And then I pulled out a bunch of my dies and I decided to go with this one that looks a little bit like a fence to me. I'm cutting it out of some cream colored paper, off white paper, and then I'm going to push out all the little pieces. And this is one of those dies where it doesn't cut it out of the entire paper. It just cuts the pieces out of it but I am going to actually cut this out and make it look a little bit like a part of a fence. And I purposely decided to make it the same color as my card base. So here I'm just using my Tim Holtz small scissors and I'm just cutting around it. Don't need to be precise. And any kind of die you have in your stash would work for this. Just something, I was just looking for something to put the flowers on or maybe put some green under or over it. And so I'm just playing with this a little bit and the white against the white is hard to see but I tried to darken this up a little bit so you could see it a little bit better and then I'm just going to play with some of these flowers and see which ones I like with this die set. I think it's super important to just kind of play around until something feels right. As you guys know I don't plan my cards ahead. I plan like a concept so in this case I wanted to use these pattern paper flowers that I had die cut out in my pattern paper technique part one. Here I'm just giving it a little differentiation by just using a dauber and some pink ink. This is actually picked raspberry is the color. Just putting a little bit on a dauber and I'm not even re-inking the dauber just gives it a little bit of definition and differentiates it from the other leaves because I'm going to put these on top of each other and cause a little bit of dimension that way. And so if you just put different colors on some of them or make them just somehow different, it does make them pop out a little bit better. And this is just a little double-sided silicone plate that's sticky. It's a sticky map. And I use that to just color some of these things. So I put that picked raspberry on those centers as well. And I decided to glue down with my Barely Art Precision Craft glue this little fence looking die. And it's not a fence at all, but it reminds me of a fence. So that's why I put it up there. And I'm just going to do the outside edges. So those two corners corners and that way I can start to put this greenery around and that way then I'll know where to put the flowers and this greenery is actually cut out of pattern paper as well and again watch part one so you can see how I cut out these beautiful flowers and greenery just using some pattern paper that I don't really love it really works out well because then I don't have to do a lot of coloring or shading because this green paper actually had a bunch of little writing on it and it was very hard to read. It wasn't readable writing and it looks like little vines now in the greenery. So it's kind of cool and you can see here I'm just trying to push some of this through the fencing and it's got glue all over it. So I'm getting glue all over myself but that's fine. And now I can then put these flowers on and I want to keep them within the card base. I will eventually put a color on the back side, but I wanted to make sure these flowers stayed on. I didn't want to really cut them off. And then there you see I just put that pink center and then I'm just going to play with these leaves a little bit, put some more greenery in to balance out the card a little bit more. And there's lots of different ways that you can make some dimension with these flowers. You can curl them, you can just move them like I was just doing. This is a different flower from a different die set. I used the same pattern paper set so that they were all similar colors, but they're all slightly different. And so the ones that sit on top of each other are slightly different as well, different pattern paper. And that is what gives it a lot of differentiation. And at the end of the video, I'm going to do some real close-ups so you can see all the different colors of this pattern paper. So that looks good so far. I've got a lot of space at the top, but I want to make sure I leave room for the sentiment. And this sentiment's a little bit different. I haven't used it before. It says wishing, and then inside of that banner at the bottom, it says you a happy life, I think. And you'll see I have to make that pop out a little bit because it 
gets lost in that banner. So I'm just trying to determine where I'm going to want to put that. And then I'm going to press that onto my sticky plate, which is not that sticky, but it does hold things in place. And I'm just going to use that same picked raspberry dauber, put a little bit of color on there just because the card base is off-white. This was a white sentiment that I had previously cut out and I wanted to give it a little bit of color so it matches those flowers or at least the insides of the flowers. And here's where I decided I need a pen so you can actually see what this says. So it does say wishing you a happy life. And it's not perfect with that pen, so I'm going to have to find something else if anybody else has ideas. So it's just basically embossed into that banner. And so I either need a sharper pen, which I thought that was a pretty sharp pen, but or maybe I could put some colored pencil maybe. I don't know. But if anybody has any ideas, let me know in the comments below. You guys are always so helpful and I appreciate it so much if I have a sticking point or something I don't really know. So... All right, so stuck that in amongst the flowers. I'm using some of that pink on another little flower piece. We're going to stick that in the center of a bigger flower and balance out this card a little bit. And I'm putting some of these foam dots just to give it a little bit more dimension. I'm also using glue because sometimes the glue dots are not perfect. <laughs> and so it's just a double safety technique. It makes me feel better anyway. I'm going to throw in a few more leaves to balance out the leaves in here as well. I tend to do more versus less. <laughs> I would say that's probably one of the things about my card crafting that sometimes drives me crazy is I can't leave well enough alone. I still like how this came out and I wish you could see that gate or fence looking thing. And then I ended up adding a few more flowers just because I felt like there were some empty spaces and I have a lot of these flowers as well. So I was like, might as well use them. And one last one. Nope, thought it was the last one. <laughs> guess, guess I'm finding more and more. So I have this kind of zoomed in so you can't see where I'm pulling these from, but uh, I am pulling them off of my desk. Okay, so I like the outside so far. Let's do something on the inside. And I have a few more flowers left. So we'll glue these to the inside. I sometimes like to do that top right corner because you don't usually do a lot of writing there and then I either do the bottom left corner or I'll do the other side and in this case I did the other side and then that ties nicely. I always like to tie in the inside with the outside of the card and again I'll show you some really nice close-ups at the end with a little bit better lighting without that ba black background but you can see a little bit of the definition and some of that pattern paper there so I really enjoyed the pattern paper in these dies. Okay, so going on to the next card, I am using some vintage photo on a dauber for this, and this is just rest oxides if I didn't say that earlier. I am going to have more of a nature scene, so I wanted to use some, I love vintage photo, it just seems to make everything look better, especially if you have like stark white. It just makes it look a little bit nicer. So again, I'm just putting it on the leaves and putting it on the flowers. And then I have a get well sentiment that has a shadow and an out the inside words. And so I'm using a little bit of the vintage photo on the shadow part. And we'll use that later on in this card. And so this is obviously going to be a get well card. These flowers are actually just a little bit on the gray side. They are from a, some pattern paper that was gray and it was a gray pattern and it came out really pretty but again I'm gonna make this it's this is just the card is going to have a little bit of like a, a mustardy yellow color to it we're gonna make a window scene I wasn't sure if I wanted to use off-white or white and I ended up doing both because I wanted this to pop up a little bit and not just use foam tape I wanted to just keep die cutting this out so you'll see I die cut this out about three times just to give it a little bit of dimension that way. And I'm not going to show you how I die cut out each one, but here I've got another one. And then this is my card base. And so this is the background paper. And I showed you this in part one. I was just kind of leading into this. And this was the paper that I was super excited about. I think this is beautiful, a beautiful background piece. And so I'm going to use this and then add some of my flowers. And even though my flowers are kind of light pink. I think putting this pink in the background will tie it all together and not make it look weird, even though the scenery is more 
of the greens, yellows, and kind of a burnt orangey color. But you put that pink as a matting layer and it doesn't matter because I think it all looks really pretty together. So then I'm layering these up and I just want to see what that's going to look like in the background. And then I'll glue the layers together. I decided to go with the white and so I'm gonna put that cream colored one in the middle, which is fine. They're all gonna lay together well and you won't be able to see the differences. Again, this is my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue, which I love for these small intricate dies. You can always use some of your adhesive sheets for this if you prefer. I just never plan ahead enough. I don't really know what I'm gonna be doing. And so I tend to forget those and I don't mind gluing because I really like my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue but it is a heck of a lot easier if you use some of those adhesive sheets and that way these can then all just go together really well. So here's a piece because I was like where this window can't be floating out in the middle of nowhere. I'm not sure that this piece of yellow paper is going to really make all the difference in the world but at least it's then setting on something and it's you know my card so I guess I get to decide what it's going to do and I think it comes out pretty. I'm going to just add this little bit of paper at the bottom so then I can create my window and my window sill above it and I'm going to put them down with just some glue because there's three layers of both the window sill and the window itself and then I'm going to glue this window to a piece of vellum and it's thicker vellum than I probably should have used but I buy vellum where I can heat emboss on it and die cut with it so it's a little bit thicker to begin with but it's fine you'll see I'm going to put some flowers behind it and it will look just fine. Now because the background paper has so much going on I couldn't just put the pattern paper cutouts, die cutouts. I had to put a little bit of color on them to make them stand out a little bit more, especially because I'm going to have the vellum back there. So you can see I keep putting against the paper and it's still just not dark enough. So I'm going to pull out that silicone sticky mat again and I'm going to take my vintage photo and add that a little bit of ink to that, a little bit more than I had done before. Same thing with the little flower. I'm going to add a little bit of vintage photo to that, hope, hoping that that will make it stand out a little bit more. Here I'm adding rustic wilderness that green color I'm just again trying to make it stand out against that pattern paper and then I used a little bit of pink on that one and it's the picked raspberry so I'm using the same three daubers <laughs> so it's either picked raspberry the rustic wilderness or vintage photo and here I'm using a little bit of rustic wilderness again for this little bit of greenery and then also throwing some of the vintage photo on there I think it looks cool when you've got those two colors together. And so again, this is going to be behind the window. And so I wanted it to stand out a little bit more. I'm adding a little bit more vintage photo onto these flowers. And then also I took out a dark pink marker and these are tri-blend markers. So there's a dark, a medium and a light in each one. It helps you with shading and things like that. I love these markers and I do include all of my supplies in the description box below. So if you're interested any of the products I am not monetized but is helpful sometimes when I see stuff that other crafters use I'm like oh that would be fun to have and so it's super convenient if they have it in the description box so I work really hard to make sure you guys have everything in the description box that silicone mat is really nice because you just spray it with water and wipe it down and it's still sticky and again it's very mildly sticky so it's not going to make anything like overly stick to it but it just holds things in place as you ink them up or whatever you're going to do with them. I'm being a little bit brave here and I'm <laughs> sticking things down without measuring where that window is going to go. We'll hope for the best and I'm using these little foam dots and giving it a little bit of definition and I'm hoping that will kind of press it against that vellum of the window so that you could really see it through the vellum since it's such a thick vellum. And I probably spent a little bit too much time worrying about these particular flowers because you're really not going to see them. You're going to see the shadow of them. And then I took out my pops of color and this pop of color color is a cherry pie and it's a pearl based pop of color. And then I'm taking out again my tri-blend markers and I am coloring in the inside of the get well. And I want this to really pop out because there's a lot of subtle colors in there but then I've got that pretty pop of color inside the center of the flowers. So I wanted it to all coordinate really nicely and that is going to help me there. And then same thing here so the get well shadow part melded into that yellow paper so I'm just putting a little bit of color on the around the edges to hope for it to stand out a little bit more against that yellow paper. 
And then I'm going to use some very thin foam tape. It's a normal thickness, but it's thin so it can get inside of the crevices. And I won't show you. It takes me a long time to get them around all of the different little words. And again, I wanted this to be popped up, so it's a little bit tedious, but I like the way this turned out. It is going to be popped out. And then the insert, I'm just putting some glue on it so it'll actually recess in. And I think it's a really pretty look. I like to do that sometimes. And then I'm just going to use my reverse tweezers and push that get well into so it actually is recessed and that glue can adhere to the paper. All right, so, so far so good. I need to make sure that those pops of color actually dry. And if you've seen other videos, I sometimes just keep moving and keep going. And so here I'm using a marker and decided to make these even a little bit bolder. I'm being very risky because I've got those pops of color that are still very wet. We'll hope for the best. And I'm just setting that on top to make sure that it's gonna be perfect and we'll set it aside to dry. And then we'll move on to our second card. I am just using a die to cut that out and we're going to put that in the center and then we'll create a sentiment to go inside of the smaller piece. And then that just gives me a base so that I can put some flowers around it. I think this is the easiest way to use flowers. You create something in the center and then you put some flowers all the way around it. And so here I'm just playing with different ones and which ones do I want? I've got so many flowers to choose from. It's almost like I have too many because I'm like, hmm, maybe this, maybe that. So again, the pattern paper is so pretty with these die cuts. And then, you know, you can add just a little bit of color to the edges of the leaves and that makes it just stand out a little bit more. But uh, you can see I've got a dauber there waiting. So because I have the green in the background, I'm using my Rustic Wilderness Distress Oxide to color around the edges of these little die cut flowers. And again, that will just help it stand out a little bit. And I was going to do green on that other one, but then I'm like, no, no, it needs to be a different color. So I'm using my vintage photo dauber without even re-inking it and just giving it a little bit of color on the edges. And you don't have to do this. It's totally optional. I could just have put all the flowers on just as easily. It would save a lot of time. And if that's what you're looking to do, then you could have certainly just put the flowers that you would die cut out all on top of each other and they would look just fine. All right, so here I'm just trying to get an idea for the space that I have. And then I got a little frustrated and I said, you know what, I just need to push this down. So I put some glue on the back of that and just put that down so that I would have a clearer idea of, of what I have to work with. And then I'm just using this you can use anything that has a cylinder, like a nice small size like this. And I'm just rolling those leaves and that will make them a little bit more dimensional. And I also wanted to do that first because I wanted to see how much room I was going to have. And so then I was going to move it around until I knew those petals were going to be on the card base. And then that's the second one. And I haven't done anything with those petals yet. And then this is the inside. And I'm just going to pop that up with some foam tape their foam dot and a little bit of glue for extra security and we'll pop that in the center. And that looks really pretty and then I'm doing this one again in advance because it's the bigger flower and so I'm going to curl all these petals and then I forgot to use the dauber to make a little bit of color on there and I'm using the rustic wilderness on the outside of the petals so it's a little bit opposite from what I did on those first two. I'm just again putting some glue in the center on there and adhering that directly to the card base. And that fits perfectly when they're all curled up like that. And then I'm using the vintage photo on the inside of the other one. And we'll just glue that to the center. And then I have a different center of the flower for this one. And I'm putting a little bit of that rustic wilderness on the off-white centerpiece just to give it a little bit of interest. Again, totally optional. I'm going to pop this up onto some foam tape to give it some dimension. And then we'll pop that in amongst the flowers. And as you guys know, I do cut out stuff because this is a very long video to start off with. And then if I can cut things out that you guys get the idea of what I'm doing, I will do that so you don't see me put every single piece of my foam. So I'm taking out some sentiment strips here and you know I keep everything in these little boxes. That's my organization technique. You can watch my craft room organizational video if you'd like. It's my most popular video. I redid my entire craft area. So I'm using some tattered rose. I'm making some color with die cut sentiment. And then I decided to put some more of that gray colored paper greenery. I guess I, can you call it greenery when it's gray? With some of the leaves I should say. 
and the gray leaves. And I'm just gonna kind of put those as a border. And then that hello will go in the center like that. But I'm gonna pop it up with some of those little foam dots. And I cut my foam dots in half sometimes if I've got smaller spaces like I do here. Again, I cut out a lot of this because you guys get what I'm doing there. I'm just popping some foam tape and I, I do a lot of it because I do mail most of my cards and I like them to stay popped up where they should be. And then here I'm just going to glue the leaves down. I lost one leaf because I can tend to be a little bit rough with my craft sometimes. I think that creates a nice look with them kind of on each opposite corner. And then I take out my pops of color again and I'm putting a dot inside of each one. As you saw me do earlier, you want to tap on the backs of them and it makes that pop of color not have that point to it and it's more like a true dot and it's a little bit flatter and so it just depends on the look you want. If you like it to be pointy then then don't do this but I like them to look a little bit flatter. It still has dimension to it but it's just flat. Again I intended to go with about three but we got a lot more than three. I think we have six or seven. <laughs> Again so that flattens out those pops of color a little bit and that's really pretty. Look at all that pattern paper there and all the dimension and color. I think that's a really pretty card. Okay, I'm going to set that aside and let that dry and we'll take out this one because this one is pretty much dry now. And then as I mentioned before, I didn't really measure this. So I'm going to have to move one flower over a little bit and I don't need to pull off that dot. I can just add another one, move it over slightly, and then we will put the window on. I also decided to put a butterfly. So I'm going to use some picked raspberry, again, distress oxide, and I'm going to use this on my butterfly because she's a little bit light. I did put her on some patterned paper as well. It was a pink and white feather pattern. It's really pretty on these butterflies, but uh, I think adding this picked raspberry will bring that all together because that's what I used on the flowers and it matches the ink I used on the get well. And so that butterfly will be a nice addition. So I'm going to stick this window on and I did use some double-sided foam tape. Got one piece of foam tape that's not behaving. We'll move that over and then stick that all down. And so you can see that I did use kind of a darker vellum or thicker vellum so you don't see those flowers in all the detail that I put into them. <laughs> but you could still see them. And then this butterfly. I just love these wings of these butterflies. This is a great die set. I will include it in the description box below because it is beautiful and super inexpensive. All right so I'm liking this so far. I'm trying to decide what else I want to do here because it's a little plain. So I'm going to put some green greenery. Uh, this is just some viney looking leaves and I'm going to cut some of it off because it's going to hang a little bit too high and then I can also spread it out a little bit. Glue that down and then this is just kind of giving it all a little bit more interest and then I'm going to stick some flowers in there too and that'll just finish out the card. So you see some of them behind the window, but then you see some of them outside as well. So I decided to pull out my pops of color. I wanted to put something in the center of these flowers, and I went with a pops of color, again, a pearl one, but it's called Orange Sherbet, and it doesn't look all that orange to me, but that's the color. Double checked it even. <laughs> and then I decided in the center of this butterfly, I was going to put some of these little embellishments. And then my hand hit the other ones. So I wiped off the pops of color and just decided to go with the gem embellishments on all three of those items. Okay. And then I need to attach it to the card base. And I decided to put a little bit of that picked raspberry that was still on that dauber around the edge of the outside of the card base. And then I also am going to put a little bit on just the edges of the inside of the card. Again, I just like to tie in the inside and the outside. That little bit just gave it a little bit more interest. Again, I like to tie different colors in and then I'm using my tape runner. This tape runner I think is called AdTech. Again, I will include it in the description box below, but I get it from Hobby Lobby. You can get it on Amazon as well. All right, time to work on the inside of the card. So I have, again, a ton of these flowers. So I'm going to take some matching flowers, put a little bit of that picked raspberry on the outside so because my <laughs> tape runner was there. I just used some tape runner and then as an afterthought, I'm like, huh, I should probably put some of this gray leaf to it. But then I had a smaller flower and I didn't think that looked quite right with it. So I'll just snip some off and we'll use some for the top and some for the bottom and it'll all look fantastic. And this time I decided to go with 
the top right corner and the bottom left corner. Again, those are two spots you typically don't do a lot of writing on. So those are usually safe for me to put things like this. And then again, using my tape runner because it's out. I sometimes just use what's out, but then I was like, oh, this little stem is not going to do well without any glue. And then I have these little stickers. I'll see if I can find where I got them from, but I may have gotten them from the dollar store. I get a lot of things from the dollar store. And these just... They don't have dimension to them, but they're sparkly and they look similar to the gems that I put on the outside. So I like it all to tie together like that. Just a little close up. You can see those flowers through that vellum just a little bit. As I mentioned earlier, I love my viewers. I don't know what these are. This was part of the die set with all of these flowers and I just don't know what they do. So if any of you know what these are for, I tried to curl them up, I tried to roll them and I don't know what they're for. Next, I just wanted to show you what I do with the extras. So I didn't use these flowers and so I'm putting them with the die sets and these are just little plastic envelopes with some magnetic strips. And then in the back of the envelopes, I stick my extra dies that have already been cut out, so the cuts. And so I have the dies on the one side and the cuts on the outside. And as I promised, I wanted to show you what each card looked like close up without that black background because I don't think the black is working very well for me. Look at all the dimension and that pattern paper just is gorgeous. So take out your ugly pattern paper and make some dies out of them. Use them for flowers especially. And then I made this other card just afterwards because I was having so much fun with these flowers. And so I wanted to show you that one and I never showed the inside of that one earlier. So... Thanks for joining me today. If you haven't already, please click the like button if you enjoyed this content and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And for more cards that include pattern paper, watch this video next. I'll see you in the next video.